This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, this is a lecture on Chapter 12 of the free lecture notes. And um, we're still on process costing. In the previous lecture, I introduced it, showed you what the basic idea was. But I said that there were three problem areas. And the first area you could be tested on is losses. And so let me explain with a series of little examples uh, what we're talking about and how we deal with it. Uh, and first of all, look at example one. During March, the following costs were incurred in a process. We've got materials, labour and overheads. Uh, and the materials, we put in a thousand kilos and then we did some work on it. Uh, but it says a normal loss of 10% was expected. So we always expect we're going to lose some goods. Uh, maybe, for instance, we're making beer. And I don't know how it's made, but suppose you put all the liquid in and boil it. Well, when you boil it, some of it disappears as steam. So you may put in a thousand litres, but you'll always expect some of it disappears and you'll get less out. And that's what's happening here. A normal or expected loss, we expect to lose 10%. And so what do we do? Let's do our costings first of all as a little statement. We will do a tier count after, but I've already said that's much less likely to be relevant. You certainly won't be preparing full tier counts. But I'll do a little statement. Uh, what, what did we spend? Well, materials. Keep a check on your units, which here is kilos. We put in a thousand kilos, the cost 12,000. In addition, labour, 7,000. In addition, overheads, 8,000. So at that stage, we put in a thousand. And the total cost, 12, uh, 90, 27,000. Now before we simply divide and said, oh, it's 27 a unit or 27 a kilo. But here it's a bit silly to do that because we know from the very beginning that we don't expect we're going to end up with a thousand kilos at all. We expect we're going to lose 10%. And so bring that into our costings. Our normal or expected loss. 10%, we put in a thousand, so we expect to lose a hundred. And therefore, we're expecting to end up with 900, having spent 27,000. And so, what's the cost per unit or per kilo of what we now expect to produce? The cost per kilo. 27,000 for 900 expected units comes to, oh, why am I using my calculator this time? $30. No problem. Every unit will be charged at 30. Uh, I will do a quick tier count, but again, don't worry too much about this. Let's see how it goes. Uh, we always debit with all the costs, so materials, a thousand kilos, uh, $12,000. Uh, Labour, 7,000. Overheads, 8,000. So a total of a thousand kilos, $27,000. Immediately, we know we expect to lose 10%, 100, and so put that in. The normal loss, uh, 100 kilos, 10%. Did you? We then do our costings, and we arrive at 30 a kilo, and so our output to the next process. 900 kilos, 
and at $30 a kilo, the value 27,000. Oh, okay, that was nice and easy. However, right, let's make it a bit more fun. If you turn over, it says normal loss with a scrap value. Now, the word normal loss uh, does not always mean that it actually disappears like steam when we're making beer. We also use the word loss um, if some of the uh, units are damaged and aren't good output. Now here, uh, that hundred uh, just disappeared. But look at example two. The following costs were incurred, 30, 12, 10, 8. A normal loss of 10% is expected, but below, losses have a scrap value of $5 a unit. So what it's saying is that these losses haven't disappeared. They're just faulty. You know, maybe we're making cigarettes and some always come out bent and have to be got rid of. But instead of just throwing them away, maybe we can sell them cheap to somebody. And that's what we mean by scrap value. Instead of throwing them away, somebody might buy them cheap. Well, they're prepared to pay five dollars. OK, no problem. Let me show you how you deal with that. Let's do our costings first. Um, list all the costs, so materials. 3,000 kilos, $30,000. Uh, Labour, 12,000. Overheads, 10,800. And so at that stage, 3,000 kilos are there, and the total cost, uh, 52,800. Again, though, there's a normal or expected loss, and we build that into our costings. We don't expect there'll be 3,000 kilos. So the normal loss is 10%, 300. However, this time, we do expect we'll get a bit of money in from those 300. We'll scrap them, we'll sell them at $5 each. Well, if we do get any money from uh, this wastage, this loss, we treat it effectively as a negative cost. We've spent 52,800 on materials, labour and overheads. We're going to get back a little bit. At $5 a unit, we'll get back 1,500. And so we're going to end up with 2,700 units or kilos at a net cost of $51,300. And so what's the cost per unit or cost per kilo going to be? Well, as always, simply divide. A net cost of 51300 for 2,700 good units. And that gives us a cost of... Nineteen per kilo. So there we are. Normal losses, expected losses, bring into your costings and treat any revenue from them, any scrap of money, effectively as a negative cost. Net cost fifty one three for two seven. Again, despite what I've kept saying, I will quickly do a process account to show you how that appears. As always, you debit with all the costs. So materials, 3,000 kilos, $30,000. Labour, 12,000. Overheads, 10,800. So a total of 3,000, 
Immediately we bring in this normal, this expected loss. Uh, it was 10%, 300. And how much are we getting? We're getting five dollars a unit, 1500. Then we do our costings and we say, well, our output, how many did the output? 2700. And we're valuing from our costings at $19 a unit. The output will be valued at $51,300. And there we are, we've accounted for it, and it balances. So, so far, I hope so good. Normal losses. We bring them into our costings. However, there is one more problem. And in a second, I'll stop this lecture and I'll deal with the remaining loss problem in the next lecture. But just to uh, introduce what's coming, we expected here that we would lose 10%. Maybe on average, we always lose 10%. But of course, it would be a miracle if every month we lost exactly 10%. Sometimes we might lose a bit more than 10%, sometimes a bit less. So in the second lecture on this chapter, I'll go through what we call abnormal losses and gains, when we end up losing a bit more, a bit less than we expect. But I'll do that in part two of the lecture, uh, the next one.